Hi, it's Oliver here from Oliver James. Hope you're all nice and well. And I'm joined today by our mortgage consultant, Joe. Hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, so this is Joe. Joe works for the Mortgage Advice Bureau and he's our go-to guy for all mortgages. Um, so I thought it'd be good to give him a quick interview so we could pose some questions to him uh, that people would be interested about, about mortgages. So, um, so we will get, we'll get underway with that. So but before we do that, I'd, I'd like to do just some quick fire questions. Okay, yeah, no um, worries. So we can just get to know you a little bit yeah, more, see absolutely. what sort of person you are. Okay. There's important questions out there like Android or Apple? Apple, all day. See, I'm Android. Every day. I'm really ridicule for that. <laughs> tea or coffee? Coffee. Oh, tea on an evening, but coffee most of the day. And how do you like your coffee? Uh, black. Right. Same as my tea, black, no sugar. Favourite month of the year? Uh, December. It's my birthday. Favourite holiday of the year? Uh, abroad. I like the sun holiday, nice yeah. to relax. I say nice and relax. After about three days, I want to go on an adventure. Right. So. <laughs> Have you ever done a safari? Uh, I have, yes. I've been to Kenya. Um, yeah, I've been to Kenya and been on safari there. It was very good. And uh, Joe here was previously in the uh, armed forces. I was, yes. Believe it or not. Cyprus at a point. I was, yes. And now he's doing mortgages. There Bit of go. a change. Who, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into some mortgage questions because that's obviously what people are watching this for. Okay. Um, so just a couple of uh, questions. So how much deposit do you generally need to buy a house? Okay, so the minimum deposit you would need is 5%. So when we talk about 5%, percent is five percent of the purchase price so if you're buying a hundred thousand pounds you need a five thousand pound deposit so hundred percent mortgages are off the table at a the thing moment. of the past yeah do you think they'll ever come back no okay no. but to get the best deal because obviously five percent mortgages or 95 percent mortgages are not going to be the best interest rates i'm presuming that's right so um when people talk about five percent deposits we look at it from the other way around we work on a scale called a loan to value so it's the amount of loan you take compared to the value of the house. Yeah. So when people say they're taking or well, putting down 5% deposit, we say you're borrowing 95% from the bank. So every 5% you come down, so every 5% deposit you come down, the interest rates change. So at 5%, they'll be at they're quite high, 10% they'll come down, and then at 15% deposit, you'll come down even more. Okay. The, le the less deposit you put down, the tighter the criteria. So okay, it's the harder it is to get a mortgage. That's, that's correct, yes, okay. because there's more risk to a but mortgage company. The general rule of thumb, is it best to sort of go 20%, 10%? What, what, I know it's probably quite an open-ended question, that. But yeah, it, again, it's, it's personal preference. It, well, not yeah. personal preference. It, it's what's good for, or what's right for you. If you've only got 5%, there are lenders out there that can deal with um, more adverse So, But somebody people. could come to you and go, I've got... X amount of deposit, but I can up it to, to X amount. So you, and you would then be able to tell them the difference between the, the that's right. So that's you, right. You could all work that out. For that's them. correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, next question: Is it still around about four times your salary to, to the mortgage you can get? So at the moment, the average is four point four nine times to be exact. Your income, yeah, to be exact. Uh, so what we'll do is, if rough rule of thumb is four point four nine, so you times that by your salary, and you get roughly what you can borrow. If you've got loans, credit cards, higher purchases, or uh, PCP deals, then that will start to to decrease. Oh, no. That's right. So if you're unsure about that. Obviously, let me know, give me a call, I can work that out for you, how much money you can borrow. But um, there are some providers that go five, six percent. That's right, yeah, there's some specialist lenders times. that look at up to potentially six times. They're more for like doctors, solicitors, that sort of professional yeah. sort of um, job roles. They, they... Um, but if you're unsure, again, that's what I'm here for, come okay. and speak to me. Um, I can help out with that. Okay, so um, some questions from the audience. Um, so I've got a question from Toby. Uh, how long does it take to get a D DIP, dis decision in principle? Okay, so a decision in principle, uh, it can take about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so so if, if someone's mortgage consultant out there is saying, you know, it's going to take a few days... Yeah. They're just too busy. That, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So um, the process we have uh, is we'll speak to a client to find out what sort of what they're looking for, get a bit of general information, but then send them a mortgage questionnaire out for them to fill in and ask for three months worth of pay slips, three months bank statements, uh, proof of ID and proof of uh, deposit. Uh, 
At that point, we've got all the information we need to get a decision in principle. So when they've made an offer on a house and the estate agency want to see their decision in principle, let us know. We can get that within, like, say, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so it's, yeah. quite, it's quite important to come and speak to you first. That's right. And then provide all the information that you need so then when they do find the house that they want, they can just, it's a quick call. That's it couple of taps on the keyboard and you've, you've got what, you've, that's, what they need. That, yeah, potentially, yeah, that's okay. right. Um, question from Laura. Is there an age limit to a mortgage? So the minimum term you can take on a mortgage is five years. Uh, and the, the you have to have your mortgage paid off by the age of 70. That's what the mortgage lenders set down as their retirement age. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you need to be 65 when you're applying for a mortgage. Now, if you are thinking, if you're 66, for example, and you're worried that you know, you're not gonna be able to get a mortgage because of that, there are options available. We can use retirement income. Um, like pensions and That's stuff. right, yeah, uh, to work out how much they can borrow and, and look at that. Um, there are also other products available for lending into retirement. So it's not a lost thing um, if they are unable to to, you know, to it's worth deal with that five year term. That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, question from Sophie. How much deposit do you need for a buy to let and does it matter how much you earn? Okay, so for buy to let, so high street lenders that do buy to lets, they'll want to see a minimum of £25,000 uh, annual salary and they'll want 25% deposit. So again, 25% of the purchase price. There are specialist lenders out there that we use that do have or do ask for just 20%, but those interest rates are quite a bit higher than if you had 25. So I'd say the standard uh, industry uh, deposit amount is 25% of the purchase price. So let's just say you're on 25 grand and you had the 25% mortgages, but then you start to get more than one, you got two or three buy to lets. Do they start getting harder to get because you, your, your income or does it, is the... No, there's the specialist lenders out there yeah. that, um, that deal with just buy to lets and those, will want to see proof of income, but there's no minimum requirement. So if, for example, someone's, I don't know, a part-time cleaner somewhere, but has got money to invest in property, yeah. that's absolutely fine. But there's lenders out there that we've got access to that can help. Okay, uh, next up we have Tom, who's asked, should you overpay your mortgage if you can? Okay, that's personal preference. Um, I'd always say yes, if you can make overpayments or payments, more payments towards your mortgage, declare it off early. I'd say yes. But there, there, is a, there is a limit, isn't there? That's correct, yes. So I only know that because he told me before we started this interview. <laughs> so on your mortgage illustration, um, it will say somewhere in there that you can make a maximum of 10% of the mortgage balance okay. every year as an overpayment before you start getting charged. So for example, if your mortgage balance is 100,000, for that year you can pay 10,000 pounds extra towards that without being charged by the mortgage company. Um, so yeah, you can always make overpayments. Again, you're not obligated to. Today's lifestyles, you know, everyone's very busy doing other things. So people don't want to be paying their mortgage off as quick as possible. For me, that's always the, gate, the goal and the game is to pay it off early. Um, but again, you're not obligated to. It's all personal okay. preference. Uh, next question from uh, Dave. If I lose my job, I hope you're not losing your job, Dave. Um, can I pause my mortgage? That's something you'd need to speak to the mortgage lender about, Dave. Uh, you'd need to give them a call. Usually most mortgage lenders will let you um, pause your mortgage for about three months. You will have to pay back that three months worth of mortgage payments that you missed, but it won't affect your credit rating. That's, again, lender specific and something you need to speak directly to them about. Okay, uh, message, uh, question from Christina. Uh, what's the best way to improve your credit score? Okay, Any so tips? with credit scoring, the thing that most mortgage lenders look at is they wanna make sure that all your addresses match. So every piece of credit, every bank account that you have, make sure it's the same address that you live in. And also make sure you're registered on the electoral roll, which is such an important thing. We see times where people have moved from a uni address to a rental house back home and then out again. and the, all the uh, addresses are mismatched and the credit rating is affected because of that. So just make sure, simple, really simple and easy to do, change your addresses so they all match. Like I say, register on the electoral roll, which doesn't yeah. take too long to do, no, is it? No, just even, type it in Google. Not voting, yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, it's, it's a benefit. Okay. Um, what's the difference between a whole of market uh, provider like yourself and just going to the bank? Because obviously a lot of first-time buyers out there 
the bank with the NatWest or the Life. So the first port of call is going to be their bank. Yeah. What's the difference between going to the bank uh, as opposed to speaking to someone like you? Okay. So um, mortgages are quite complex. Is mortgage lenders will have a set of criteria that you have to adhere to. So it might be the way your income is made up. It might be how you're paid. It could be uh, how long you've been in your job. It could even be a bit further down the line, the type of property that you're buying. They might not lend to you because of the property, how it's built, for example. So if you go into there and they say no, you've then got to go into the next bank to find out what they say, and then the next bank potentially. Whereas if you came to speak to me, you've got would one point of call. Affect, would that affect their credit? It, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So, you know, you come speak to me, I will and find out about you, your income, how it's made up, find out about the property you're purchasing so we know which lender to target. Now, the cheapest lender might not necessarily be the best lender, but we're looking for the lender that's going to be able to lend you the money. That is the best lender at that point. Yeah, because there's no point going to speak to a lender who's the cheapest and then you don't get the mortgage. Exactly right. It's best exactly right. and that's where your experience comes that's in. Right. So basically, a whole of market provider will basically look at every product that's right. Look at your circumstances and say, right, the best ones are this, this, and this. That's it. And that's what you do. That's correct. Yeah, that is. That's what I do. Um, any anything else that you think we should? Obviously, in regards to getting your ducks in the row um, and getting a decision in principle, is it best to speak to someone like you before they found the property or? Yeah, very much so. It's always worth speaking to me because our process is to calculate how much money you can borrow first. We've all been on right move looking at those two million pound houses in the local area, but if we can't afford them, there's no point in targeting them to try and look at making an offer. So come and speak to me. Um, so speaking to you nowadays, obviously with, since COVID, uh, you don't really do a lot more uh, house visits as you used to. You do more Zoom and it. phone calls and things like that. That's it, yeah. And do you know what? It works better for, for clients because they can come home, put the, put the laptop on, get on Teams or Zoom and speak to me. And they don't have to, um, you know, tidy up the front room <laughs> if I'm coming round. So everything's so just much easier. Just area around the back of the camera like I've just done <laughs> yeah, that. that's it. And you can even get those fancy backgrounds now, yeah. which I do. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot easier for, for clients. And the good thing about speaking to a broker, we're not nine till five. Um, we, we speak to people out of hours, yeah. you know. When I was applying for my mortgage, I had a million questions that I wanted to ask a mortgage advisor. Um, and there's no such thing as a silly question when it comes to it, because it's such a big commitment for people. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's, it's, it's such a big debt that you're essentially applying for. And you want to make sure it's right. So speaking to someone you trust, like myself, and guide you through the process and explain things as we go is so key. Um, what yeah. about remortgages? Is is now a good time to remortgage with interest rates, interest rates as they are? Yes, yeah, and it is. Values have gone up, so people have got equity that they didn't used to. That's so. right. Yeah. So what we do with remortgages, we have a look at the best scenario for you. Usually, we have a look about six months before your product is due to end before we remortgage because you potentially might have what's called an early repayment charge, so a charge for paying it off early. Now, if you're wanting to raise more money to potentially build an extension or do the house up we'll have a look at the implications for that and the best best case scenario for you um, so sometimes it is uh, a thing where you want to pay that early repayment charge off because you want to raise an extra I don't know, 20 30 thousand pounds to do your extension uh, but again that's something to speak to me about we can have a look at the best and worst case scenarios and what about people that want to sell because the house has gone up in value but they're tied in with someone there are lenders out there that will port the mortgage over to the new house that's right but is it still worthwhile speaking to someone like yourself to see if there is still better deals, even with with a redemption figure? That's exactly right, Oliver. Yes. So what we do is uh, every most mortgages nowadays are portable, as Oliver says. And what that basically means is you can pick your mortgage up and take it to the new house. Now, if you're wanting to borrow extra money, you can then borrow a bit extra money to make the purchase price of your new house. Now, sometimes that might not be the best financial uh, way forward because of the interest rate on your current mortgage that you're porting or the, the the lender that you're using might not be the best financially. So we look at that option and we then look at an option of remortgaging but potentially paying that early repayment charge and I'll show you the two, compare which one's best and let you know. Okay, great. Okay, well thank you for coming. Uh, Thanks for having me. Camera today. Uh, no, it's not easy doing videos. 
Um, if there are any mortgage related questions, no matter how silly or minor you think they are, um, Joe is always on hand or Joe or one of his team um, to help. So if you would like to give him a call, feel free to give our office uh, a bell on 01616965050 or you can email us at hello at oliverjames.co.uk or Facebook me anytime and we'll happily get you in touch with Joe at any time. Thanks for watching. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. <laughs> See you later.